if you're just checking out blockchain development or like you're already a blockchain developer and you're trying to figure out, hey, what's the best like coding setup that I can use to get the job done? You know, the what kind of computer should I use? Text editor? And maybe you don't even know the tools that you need to get started. Well, in this video, I'm going to break that down and actually tell you what I personally use as a blockchain developer who works with this technology on a daily basis and tell you, you know, what I think the best things that you can use are if you're trying to break into this industry and acquire these highly valuable skills. So before we get into that, you know, for your new run here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to have master blockchain step-by-step -step start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's talk about what you need uh, in order to break into blockchain. Like I said, maybe you're already a blockchain developer and you're just trying to figure out, hey, like what's the best tools that I can use to be more productive, to have a better developing experience that I'm actually happier when I'm doing the work. So let's just break it down like piece by piece and talk about the computer choice first, because this is actually a question I get all the time, which is like, hey, I'm thinking about getting a new computer. I want to learn this stuff. What can I get? Well, my short answer to this question is always basically any computer running Mac, Linux, or Windows made in the last five years is going to get the job done. And actually, my preference is in that order. So Mac, then Linux, then Windows. So I'll show you some options there, kind of one by one, and then we'll talk about why. So we'll start with Mac. And now I realize that some of this is just like kind of personal preference, a little bit of my own bias mixed in here. I've been a Mac guy for a really long time, but I actually do empirically see others having an easier time getting started with Mac, especially over something like Windows when they're trying to specifically get things working for blockchain. OK, um, you know, Mac and Linux are going to have a very similar experience um, in terms of, you know, setting up your developer tools in your computer. And just how the packages work, how, you know, the environment setup goes, you can have a very similar experience, but Mac actually has this added bonus of having all this other sets of tools and applications that are just, you know, work off the shelf and compatibility with other mobile devices, things like that, and the Mac ecosystem, which Linux doesn't really have quite as much of. And actually, a lot of people who are using Windows for blockchain development, I experience this all the time inside of our uh, educational programs, where a lot of these students have a really hard time getting their environment set up for blockchain development out of the box. It can be done. We have comprehensive training on how to do that, but it's typically harder. And a lot of people end up switching towards, you know, Windows subsystem for Linux or something like that as a workaround. And that's why I recommend Mac first, because the Mac and Linux both have an easier time getting set up. But then Mac has this added bonus of having a, uh, a, a rich ecosystem built around it in terms of applications. Pretty much any app that you want to download for Mac uh, exists on that, not necessarily on Linux, with the exception maybe being for gaming. So if you're going to do that, like what type of computer should you get? So, you know, I personally use a MacBook Pro. So I'll just pull up my uh, specs here. I've got a 16 inch 2019 MacBook Pro processor is this 2.4 gigahertz, eight core Intel Core i9, 32 gigs of RAM. I've got the AMD Radeon Pro, eight gigabyte and the Intel UHD graphics. Uh, that's like these specs right here. And I believe I've also got two terabytes of hard drive space. So that's just pretty much what I use. I don't upgrade my computer super often. So I'll probably get maybe another year or so out of this computer, maybe like on a three to five year upgrade cycle. And I prefer a laptop for lots of reasons. And so people are saying like, hey, should I get a laptop? Should I get a desktop? Top. I like laptops because if you get a pretty powerful one, then they're pretty extensible. You can always plug a second monitor into it, add peripherals to make it work exactly like a desktop. And then you get that added benefit of portability. So if you're working, you want to work remotely, you can just take your laptop with you having to back things up. So you don't necessarily have to get a MacBook Pro. You could get a you know a MacBook Air. You could get the regular MacBook model, which is you know slightly less powerful, maybe smaller. A lot of things are going to work fine for blockchain. So next up is definitely Linux. Um, you can get you know laptops that come with Linux uh, out of the box. There's multiple Linux operating systems. There's Ubuntu. This is probably one of the most popular uh, operating systems that's pretty user-friendly for Linux. And if you're talking about Windows laptops, I mean, there's a huge variety here, which I don't cover all of them. You can pretty much go to any major like electronic store website like Best Buy or Newegg, you know, whatever it is, and just look up, you know, Windows laptop. As long as it's got reasonable specs, uh, it's going to work. All right. And so like once you've figured out what computer you're going to get, um, and you're actually talking about writing code for blockchain. I mean, a lot of what you're going to do is be staring at source code all day um, and modifying that source code, maybe writing new source code. And so you're going to spend a lot of time staring at a text editor, you know, so a place where you can actually, you know, type in source code, edit it, save the files, all that type of stuff. So which text editor should you use? Um, well, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter uh, as long as you are 
proficient at it, right? As long as you, I mean, if, if you were proficient at editing text inside of, you know, a notepad, it would be fine, but probably don't recommend that because I have a feeling you're not going to be as effective uh, in that environment as a, a more rich text editor. So if you're going down that route, um, then there's lots of options. So I personally use Sublime Text. I've used Sublime Text for a very long time. I'm kind of a creature of habit in this regard, uh, in the sense of it would take me a, a long time to adapt to a, a new text editor. Um, and uh, that time investment, honestly, isn't really worth it for me to get some other benefit. Because I think a lot of the text editors just have different trade-offs, and a lot of it's come down to personal preference. So I never feel a compelling need to, uh, to switch. Uh, but lots of people like other things like VS Code. Okay, I mean, sometimes developers just like trying new things. Uh, it's entertaining. It changes things up. It keeps keeps their work fresh. I'm not really that way when it comes down to like the core tools that make me fast at doing things. But if you are and you like trying out new tools, that's fine. So VS Code's a pretty popular one. Um, it's got some pretty cool features out of the box um, that, you know, you have to configure manually. Lots of other text editors, uh, like the built-in terminal, the Git plugins, all that type of stuff. And that being said, you can configure a lot of other text editors to work very similar to VS Code. Like, you could basically make Sublime Text work like VS Code with all the plugins. A lot of these have plugin managers where you can do that type of stuff. But VS Code's got a pretty cool, um, you know, kind of default setup out of the box. So another one is Adam from GitHub. This is another one got really popular for a long time, and it's a pretty popular, you know, choice uh, among developers of all types, and, and it works pretty well on blockchain. And those are some pretty popular modern text editors. Um, now, there are other text editors that are, you know, age old in terms of uh, programmers, like you could use uh, Vim, you could use you could use Emacs, any of this stuff. And people have had these preferences for a long time. Like I said, then it doesn't really matter what you use as long as you're fast and proficient at it. Now, one additional thing on top of your text editor is uh, not all text editors come with blockchain syntax highlighting out of the box, okay? So basically, like whenever you're looking at a text editor and you see how it changes the color of your code uh, so that it's really meaningful and you're actually looking at a file where you can see that like, you know, the, the, the import statements are different colors than the file name. So it just helps you look at things and, and understand it quickly. That's called syntax highlighting. And they don't always have Solidity source code uh, support out of the box. So you might have to install a special uh, package for that. So I'm using Sublime Text. I use the Ethereum package. You can just use your um, you know, package control inside the application to install that. That's what I personally use. All right. So in addition to your text editor, another tool that you're going to be using all the time uh, if you're you know, developing for blockchain or really anything uh, is going to be your terminal. OK, so this is where, you know, you're typing in system commands, uh, usually in back um into the shell uh to do things like install packages you know create smart contract deploy smart contracts run tests run any uh you know executable that you would have on your terminal this is where you're going to do it okay so you'll spend a lot of time looking at this so i actually spent a significant amount of time like testing different things out on terminal to speed up my workflow because i really reap a lot of benefit out of having a terminal that makes me really fast and i've come down to a configuration that I, I like pretty well so i'll share what that is but also give you some options about what you could use because you don't have to use exactly what i do i'll just give you some options so if you're on mac um or linux um, and I believe it also runs on Windows. There's different apps you can use. I, I mean, I just use the Mac terminal, honestly, that comes out of the box with Mac, but then I customize it. You can also use other applications like iTerm, all right? Uh, you can probably use whatever terminal that comes on your operating system. Of course, Windows has PowerShell. And you you know or you can use Windows subsystem for Linux and you can add all these things on, but um, so I just start off with the basic Mac terminal. Like I said, if you're on Mac, you can use iTerm too if you want to. In addition to that, I uh, use Z Shell. Okay, so Z Shell is kind of enhanced uh, a Bash environment. So Bash just stands for Born Again Shell, and Z Shell is just an extension of uh, the Bash shell with you know lots of improvements. And so additionally on that, I use uh, Oh My ZSH or Oh My Z Shell, however you want to say it. So which is a framework for many managing your Z shell configuration. So that's one of the benefits of Z shells. It allows you to have, you know, some pretty, you can get really granular in your preferences for how your shell works. Okay. And that's what I use oh, my ZSH for. It's got all these great plugins. You can uh, see, you know, previews and how your Git branches work. You can do like tab to completion for different things like, you know, Git commands. You can configure some pretty cool shortcuts and aliases. There's lots of different stuff you can do. I highly recommend browsing it and checking it out if you haven't used it before. All right. So next thing that I 
personally do to power up my shell is use uh, TMUX, which is a terminal multiplexer. Okay, so what does it do? You can take your terminal and manage multiple sessions inside of it. Okay, you can break those sessions down into different panes, and then you can break those panes down into different windows. So I'll just show you an example here. Here inside of TMUX, I've got four different tabs open. Now, you will have other, you know, applications like... Uh, you know, iTerm lets you split your panes and stuff. But the cool thing is this can all be managed inside of a Tmux session where you can now have these different, you know, uh, windows here down at the bottom and I can have all these different configurations per window. All right. And then I can manage all these windows into an additional configuration called settings. So, uh, yeah, or sessions, excuse me. So basically, you know, let's say you have uh, your work and then you have your side project or something like that. You could just have, you know, your work context open up and then you have all these different, you know, apps. Like, like a really popular thing for developers at their job is to maintain a bunch of different repositories. So you could just jump into your work session and then that session could have, you know, a, uh, a pane or, or like a window for every single repository that you maintain. Maybe you have microservices, maybe you have a front end, maybe you have a back end where you could easily have two different things that you swap back and forth between. And then you could break each of those windows down into multiple panes like this. And then maybe you could have your tests running in one window. You could have your console running in another window. And then maybe you could have just your general, you know, workbench running another window, maybe a server, or whatever it is, right? You, you could break, break it up on all these logical groupings and then that, that helps you manage that. And then what's really cool about Tmux, and so, so then maybe you have that for your work context, then maybe you have a side project context where you do all the same thing, or maybe you're just, you know, building a tutorial and you want to save that. Well, the cool thing about Tmux is you can add all these plugins that add on this behavior. And so one that I really like is uh, what's called Tmux Resurrect. So I can create these pretty complex uh, workflows, and whenever I turn my computer off, and turn it back on, I can actually reboot those workflows back to where they were. Now, it won't, like, restart system processes. Like, let's say you had a server running, and you turn your computer down, turn your computer off, and then you resurrect the session. It's not going to, like, restart the server, but it's basically going to open up all your panes and your tabs and your windows back to where they were before you turned your computer off, which is really a huge time saver for me because... You know, sometimes when I have like, I don't know, 20 different windows up and that's a huge time savings to not have to add all that configuration back together. Okay, so the last thing I'll say about my terminal um, is the color scheme. I've, I've spent a lot of time trying to find a color scheme that I really like. I've tried a lot of different stuff and by all means, you don't have to use this, but I personally like the solarized dark theme for terminal. This is trendy. It's not new. It's been around for a really long time. But I found that I, I really like it. Okay, so you can actually look at the solarized theme here. It's got a light theme and a dark theme. I'm not a huge fan of the light theme. I don't really like light themes in general. But um, the dark theme is really, really good and uh, easy on the eyes and has a pretty meaningful syntax highlighting differentiation. Uh, I've just gotten used to it, so I really like it. All right, so those are some of my top tools that you can use to get started uh, in blockchain. Like I said, maybe you're checking this out and you're trying to figure out, hey, what do I need to get set up in order to, uh, you know, get good at this, get fast at this? Because like I said, one of the most common questions is like, hey, which computer should I get? So that's my answer to those. And then once you've got that set up, you know, these are the other tools that I'm using all the time. This is what I personally like to use. And here's some options that you can also use yourself. So I hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dappy Diversity.